Topside's repair. Now, if you were sailing at the weekend at, in your club racing, you may have been unfortunate enough to have got some damage like this. Now, it's very important that, firstly, you don't get too disappointed about it because it's possible for you to fix it with a lot of thought and a logical process. But the first process is to assess the extent of the damage. This is very clearly covered on another video called Assessing um, GRP Repair. It's very important that you look closely because the point of impact may well be very small. And on a thin laminate such as this, the point of impact is, is quite small, the size of a teaspoon. But in fact, the star crazing that occurs around the perimeter of the damage may extend actually to the size of a dinner plate. So it's very important to assess this damage before proceeding. So don't be disappointed with this kind of damage. There is a logical step-by-step -step process of conducting this kind of repair. And we're going to be very generous with our knowledge and share the process with you. And the first step is to cut a hole which removes the damage. It's very important to wear personal protection. I'm wearing gloves, mask, goggles, and I've got a full Tyvek oversuit. Really good policy. First step is to cut out the damage. And I'm going to use here a hole saw. I'm using now a set of calipers to get an accurate measurement of the thickness of the laminate. So knowing our laminate thickness from our measurement with our calipers, we can now look at preparing the repair. And we work on a very simple formula of creating a taper or a bevel or a scarf joint to enhance the contact surface of our new laminate. We work on a 12 to 1 taper. Now given our laminate thickness is 2 millimetres, we want to make a taper that is 12 times that thickness. And that equates to, if my maths is correct, 24 millimetres. But we'll just make that 25 millimetres to round the number up. We need to grind this with an angle grinder. And I already measured the thickness of the laminate at 2 mil, so my bevel needs to be approximately 25 mil. I'm using a disc grinder with a flexible sanding disc with 60 grit to create my 12 to 1 bevel. It's important that we build up our repair to the same thickness as the existing structure. Now here we know that we've got a, a repair that is two millimeters thick. We're going to use this fabric which is a 450 gram per square meter biaxial glass fabric, incredibly strong, but also quite thin. Our 450 grams equates to a roughly half a millimeter of finished thickness. So we're going to need four layers of this to build up to our existing two millimeter laminate thickness. Now we've taken the time and trouble to measure our laminate thickness at two millimetres. We've taken the trouble to grind the bevel at 25 millimetres. Now we need to make an accurate cutting pattern. And we do that very simply with a clear piece of plastic. So here we are, back with our repair. I'm now going to make a template. So my template will cover the perimeter of, of my prepared repair and the hole itself. And if you remember, I talked about four layers of glass fabric going in here. So we need another two templates. Just like the contours on a map. Now I have my cutting pattern that I can cut my four discs from. So I now have my template and I have my other things that I need to affect this repair. I have my glass fabric, 450 gram biaxial glass fabric, and I have some really nice sharp scissors. I'm now going to use the template to place over the glass fabric 
and then use my scissors to cut the discs. So we've now got the four diminishing sizes of disc that we need to carry on with the next stage of our repair. It's important also to get the fibre to line up. So I'm just lining up the stitching and then all the fibres will be orientated for a very, very strong repair. Now you have a series of different sized patches, four in total, to build up to our laminate thickness. Now you might ask yourself, which order do these go in? Well actually, they always go with the biggest patch first. And the reason that we do that is because the biggest patch gives you the maximum contact surface of any one of these patches. Very important because if you go with the smallest patch in first, you only ever get the edge of each individual patch contacting the surface. And what that does is it creates a series of air bubbles right at the interface of the, the bevel joint. And that does not produce a good repair. You want to produce best quality repair. Next step, we're going to make what we call a backing plate. Now, you'd ask, what is a backing plate? But as, as far as conducting this repair, it's impossible to laminate against a hole. We need something to support our laminate that we're gonna build up to the existing laminate thickness. Now to do that, we're going to put some release agent on a, on a small part of the boat and create this backing plate using a single layer of glass fabric with peel ply on the back. Now, this particular top size repair is in an area where there's not too much shape. Now quite conveniently, I can do this on the other side of the hull because the shape is nice and symmetrical. So I'm going to mask an area off here and make my backing plate. I want my backing plate to be at, at least the diameter and a little bit more of the hole that we've prepared because we actually call this type of repair a letterbox repair. Now, of course, to manufacture our backing plate, I need to be able to release it away from the existing hull. And to be able to release it, I need to use some release wax. This is a dedicated mould release wax produced for GRP moulding work, but actually simonised wax will work perfectly well, simonised in the yellow tin. And we apply that with a sponge, making sure that we cover the entire surface area, making sure the masking tape is, is well attached. Get plenty of wax on there, then use a clean cloth to burnish that up. Put another coat on. You generate a little bit of heat, it seals the wax and it creates a thin film of release wax upon which we can laminate our backing plate. It's important to prime the pumps first and you do that just simply by just short depressions of each pump and you'll gradually feel some resistance until you get just a small drop appear at the spout of the pump. Same with the hardener pump. There you are, that's primed. Now to do this uh, patch that I'm going to make. I only need one pump of resin and one pump of hardener. So I make sure that I depress a full stroke of the resin and a full stroke of the hardener and that will give me exactly the correct ratio to mix thoroughly. Now I always suggest that people mix for two minutes so you can count to 120 whilst you're mixing. If you mix this at the correct ratio and you mix it sufficiently it will cure in very very wide variety of conditions 
that's blended nicely together. Now I'm going to use a small glue brush. These are available in small packets. And I'm just going to crimp the bridle up with some mole grips. And what that does is it stops all the hairs falling out in your work. Top tip. First step to apply a thin film onto our area of work. You can see that's quite a thin film that I've got on there. And I'm not making a mess, I'm making sure that I don't get any mixed epoxy on the floor. Take my glass, take my scissors. I've marked on here how much glass I need. I cut that, place it over this area. And it stays nicely in place. I need some more epoxy to wet this out. And I'm going to start at the top so that any runs I can catch as they're running down. Bring the pot close to the work. That stops you splashing it on the floor. And I'm simply making sure that the surface is wet out. I'm just making sure that I've wet the glass out and it's becoming transparent. That's a good indication that you've got it wet out. See, that's on there. Now I'm going to consolidate this using this brush and I'm going to stipple the glass in place and I'm just going to work that down like this again using the brush width as a guide and this will compact the glass and also break any air bubbles that are present in the laminate. It's best practice when you're using epoxy with glass to go through this process of either using a brush to stipple the surface down or using a foam roller to consolidate the glass and break down any air bubbles. It looks well consolidated. But I'm also going to put something on the surface of this, a product that we call peel ply. This is an essential when working with epoxy because by placing it over wet epoxy and leaving it to cure with the epoxy, once it's cured, you can rip it away. It's made from a nylon fabric and once you rip it away, because it doesn't stick to the epoxy, it leaves a, a, a negative impression of the weave of this fabric in the surface. Now that's as good as sanding the surface. And very importantly, we want this face to stick against the inside of our hull when we conduct our letterbox repair. And you can overlap this. There's no issues with overlapping it. I'll just stipple this down. And that's my backing patch complete. I now have to leave this to cure overnight before I can release this away and then use it as my backing patch in the letterbox repair. So here is a patch that I prepared earlier. And now I'm now going to show you that this will release away very, very easily from the surface like that. I'm now going to show you how to fit the backing plate. And to do that, I'm simply going to use a felt tip pen to give me an accurate idea of where to cut. Now you can see this is partly transparent. So I'm going to mark around, around about 10 mil oversize, right the way around the aperture. like so. So I've got a slightly bigger disc that I can bend and pop through our hole. Again the nice sharp scissors play a really good part here. A good top tip is to just rip some of the peel ply away just a little bit to get you started. Then simply use your scissors to cut round. That now gives us a disc 
with the peel ply already taken off in a small area so we can get that started and it's just about the right size to bend and pop through here. My next step is I'm going to drill a series of holes, four holes in here and I'm going to now thread some seizing wire. This is rigging wire. Most people with a boat probably own this. It's, you could replace it with garden wire. This would, that would do just as good a job, but it's quite handy to use wire. And then I'll thread this through because this is going to be our bond face. So we want to pull it in this way. So I'm going to thread the wire through our hole here. making sure I've got a nice lot of wire hanging out. Thread another length through. Cut that with some snips. So I've now got four pieces that I can then bend this, pop it through the aperture, like so, put some mixed epoxy around it and glue it back on itself like this. I'm now going to abrade the inside face of this to give me a really strong bond with our backing pad. Just take a little bit of uh, 60 grit paper here back to some theory. Very small point but a very important point is to make sure that you've filled the very edge of your bevel. Where the backing plate meets the bevel, at this point here, you can actually have a small air bubble. You might also find that there are air bubbles in the existing laminate. The perfect thing to fill these with is West System Epoxy, mixed with West System 406 colloidal silica to a kind of mayonnaise consistency, one that's suitable for brushing. You can use a small glue brush to apply this. Very important. To bond our backing plate in place, we're going to use a thickened mix of uh, epoxy. I've used West System 406 colloidal silica and West System epoxy mix. And I'm going to just do that just by dragging a thin, bead back around the edge of my repair. Keep a nice clean bit of work. Just ensuring I've got a nice bead just at the back face. I then take my backing piece with all the wire pieces, bend it so it will pass through the hole, and then secure it back on itself like this. You can use the wires to secure the plate in place. I'm just using my mixing stick just to clean this up around the edge. Moving ahead, we've got our disc in place. I've snipped uh, one side of the wires, but you can see how I've bent the wires to act like a spring and hold the backing plate in place. I'm just going to snip the other wire and pull that through. And now I'm ready to start conducting our laminating work. So I've used one pump of resin and one pump of hardener to give me enough material to prime the surface here. And again, I'm going to mix for two minutes until I've blended the resin and hardener into a, a nice homogeneous mix. I'm going to brush the area of this repair. This is part of a process that we call two-step bonding. That's to say that before another operation, you brush the resin hardener mix over the surface and the porosity of that surface allows the epoxy to really wick into the fibre. So I'm hoping here that you'll see 
quite a strong colour change to the existing fibreglass as I brush the resin over it. And you can see there is a, a change in the colour as it absorbs the epoxy resin. I'm now going to make a slightly thicker mix to just fill this discrepancy around here so that we don't get an air bubble or an air gap here that compromises the strength of our repair. I've just added some West System 406 colloidal silica to the epoxy mix. See I've now got quite a creamy consistency. And I can use my brush to brush that carefully into place to bridge that discrepancy between the backing plate and our bevel. I'm now conducting the structural part of the repair, so I'm adding my four different sized discs of biaxial glass fabric. I'm going to start off with the biggest disc, which we mentioned was very, very important, and I'm going to place that over my repair, like so. And you see how it sticks there quite nicely, and it's actually starting to wet out as well. I'm now going to make up a, another mix of epoxy. One pump of resin, one pump of hardener, blend the two together thoroughly. I'm going to use a brush again to wet this out. You can see this absorbs the resin hardener mix very, very quickly. It's worth spending some time on each layer really consolidating the glass fabric just by stippling the surface, really using a degree of force to compact the glass and make the repair very, very dense. I'm just working out all the air bubbles. It looks a little bit resin rich, but then our next layer will absorb a lot of that excess resin. I'm going to line the fibre up with the stitching so it's all in the same orientation and apply the next disc. A little bit more epoxy. I'm going to use the brush width as a guide to make sure I've stippled everything. Next layer of glass. Make sure that follows the, the stitching on the last layer. You see how quickly that wets out. This is really not taking very much work at all to affect a really, really strong laminate. Final disc. Make sure it's following the run of the rest of the fibre. Right in the centre of the repair. I'm just going to work on this last patch, get, make sure I've driven all the air out of it. And that's the major structural part of my repair. There's one thing left to do here, and that one thing will save an awful lot of time, and it will also give an immense quality, immense finish quality to your work, and that's to use some peel ply over the surface. like so. Very rewarding this work and creating good quality best practice approaches to all this kind of work. I've made sure that the peel play is completely transparent there. Now this looks fantastic, I'm doing this work in a lovely warm environment but there's no reason 
why you shouldn't be able to affect this kind of repair in the dinghy park given good conditions. Once the temperature dips below double figures, then the epoxy starts to become thicker, starts to become more unwieldy. But it's easy to create a small tent around the work area with a small blower heater to introduce some good working conditions to your work. It will improve the quality of what you're doing. It will improve the success of what you're doing. Um, peel ply really does protect the laminate from any damp that might occur during the night because now we're going to leave this for a full 24 hours to cure before we rip the peel ply away and then see how much work we've got left to, to do to finish this off. Thank you.